Today I'm sharing a video collage of what's blooming now in early September here in my Zone 7 Southern New Jersey Gardens. I'm Laura from Garden Sanity and I want to encourage you today to take a walk around your own garden and notice all of the good that you see. Sure, there are annuals fading, I get it, and plants that have seen better days that you probably want to rip out, but I want you to only pay attention to all of the good going on in your garden right now. Whether it's a gorgeous evergreen color you notice, or textured perennial leaves of flowers long finished, or pretty hydrangea or Rosa Sharon flowers, each of us has something pretty in our gardens right now, today. After watching this video, head outside and take in your garden. Then leave me a comment below and tell me one bit of garden positivity that you've discovered. Let's share our garden successes with each other. We can leave that other stuff, the garden stuff that frustrates us right now. Let's leave that for another day. Come on, let me take you on a tour of what's blooming right now in my garden. This is a firelight hydrangea and I just planted it this year. It's still pretty small, but I never expected to see these flowers. Next year around this time, I hope this shrub will be six to eight feet tall and wide and that these flowers will begin to be turning red around this time of year. And this truffle of pink gumfrina I love, and so do the rabbits, so I had to plant it this year up high in some urns, but it's still going strong too. This is a flower of the true blue butterfly bush. We have two of them. And with all the heat and humidity, the flowers still are going strong despite all the rain. However, as you can see, I need to come out here and deadhead and that's gonna be an upcoming video. But at least for now, the bee still can find some pollen. And this is a prairie fire crab apple tree. We planted this in the newest bed in the backyard and there's already some berries forming. The totally tangerine geum is finished blooming for the most part. I may get some flowers in the fall, but I'm left with these gorgeous green leaves. Really pretty. And this is a button bush flower from the Sugar Shack button bush. Now, already it's turning into this little fruit that's gonna turn into a little seed pod. These are brand new plants I planted this year in a garden we're still working on, but I got my first blossom. And now we come to the little quick fire hydrangeas. I'm in love with these. These are new for me this year. I replaced some mop head hydrangeas that were not doing so great. In fact, they were horrible. So I replaced them with this and <laughs> best decision I could have made. Despite all of the rain we got from Fred, Henri, Ida, these are still looking great. And look at the leaves, they're so green. So this baby bunny was abandoned by its mom and he lives in this garden bed. He is so tiny and he will not leave. I'm such a sucker. So this is our lavender chiffon, Rose of Sharon. And the baby bunny can't eat it because I surrounded it by not only daffodils in the springtime, but some cat's pajamas catmint right now. And this is a Japanese anemone party dress. It's a gorgeous late summer into fall blooming perennial. I feel like the buds, which you're looking at now, look like almost cotton seed heads. By the way, only plant this if you're prepared to keep pulling it up where you don't want it. It spreads aggressively. A favorite plant of mine is Blue Star Calamaris. The periwinkle flowers are just so pretty. I had to circle back again to the little quick fire hydrangeas because I saw this guy. I think he's a cricket. I'm not really even sure. But it's worth another look. These are so pretty. This year, the limelight hydrangea tree has done amazingly well. Last year, after one tropical storm, it was just awful. It broke, I had to, ugh, it was just awful. 
there's videos of it so you can find those. But this year, after doing a good pruning, everything is still standing straight up. I just had to prune a few things off. And like this, I'm still getting some new blossoms. It's wonderful. Now that all the storms have passed, it's time for me to make him go away. And that's what I'm gonna be doing this week. The salvia I have a love-hate relationship with. It starts to bloom, it looks great, then it gets smashed, then the bunny tried to eat it earlier in the summer, a different bunny, and then it grew back again, but the rain smashed it again. But close up, it's pretty. This is a red yucca flower, at least what's left of the red yucca. It's past its prime, but I've still got some blooms. In fact, I cut down one bloom stalk, and this little guy, sprouted from the side. Hummingbirds love this plant. It's so easy care. And here is what the dappled willow looks like. <laughs> this is the dappled willow that I cut all the way back down to the ground and it's growing back nicely. You see some of the branches reach the fence, the top of it, which is six feet. And we've still got some good variegated color going, although some of the branches are still green. So just kind of letting it do its thing this year. And this is the bunny eating some dianthus. So this is Sedum Autumn Fire and it's got slightly more vibrant color than Autumn Joy. This will be my first year planting it. I have not planted these yet. I purchased them in June and I've been waiting until it gets cooler out. This is the week I'm gonna be planting these finally. The color you can just see, it's starting to turn from green to a very pale pink. I think these are going to do well. And this is the false cypress Devon cream that we have in a barrel towards the front of the yard. Gorgeous color. I don't think I have enough wonderful adjectives about how much I love perennial ageratum. It's so beautiful. and. What's also nice is rabbits hate it, which is great. So I planted it around the black-eyed Susans I have, and that's protected some of them. I love how the knockout roses look with the backdrop of the black-eyed Susans and the ageratum. So pretty. And then we come to the Veronica, which you saw in the very beginning of the video. This is Veronica First Love, and it's so pretty. Definitely need to do some deadheading on this and cut it back, but not just yet, not when the bees are still around it, still enjoying it. But as you can see, there are definitely some stalks that are, it's time to cut those back. This is Royal Candles right next to it. And this one, I didn't really cut back. I wanted to see what it would do, and it looks kind of funky. little futuristic. You're looking at annual vinca that survived three recent heavy rainstorms from the tropical storms that were going on. They look beautiful. No petals dropped. It's amazing. The vinca have done great in areas in the garden where it's drier. In the wet areas they've hated it. So I will plant these, replant them in the drier areas next year. And by the way, rabbits left them completely alone. A winner. Had to show you the knockout with the blue star juniper behind it. And this is another juniper, a sea green juniper. The berries are gorgeous. The pinky winkies are looking lovely right now. And as you see on the right with that white bloom, still getting new flowers growing. It's beautiful. These peach drift roses have been wonderful this year. Originally I planted them, the rabbits chewed them down to nothing, I came to dig them out, and they were blooming like crazy already, so go figure. So I'm keeping them, and I will, during the winter, I'm going to protect them with some sort of covering around them because I don't want the rabbits eating them down to nothing. 
but aren't they pretty? The flowers on our Muskogee crepe myrtle are just starting to kick in. It's really late this year in blooming, but nonetheless, super happy that we're getting blooms. That's always the plus side. You just never know what time of year they're gonna show up. These piglet grasses are so pretty. I showed them to you in a previous video just a little while ago, and my plan is to dig out two of them and replant them elsewhere because this one is just putting out enough of these beautiful, beautiful flower heads or seed heads. Aren't they neat? And that's a winter gem boxwood behind them. And then you see the little lime hydrangeas and look at how they're starting to turn pink. They're so pretty right now. There's definitely some, as you can see here, that still have their pistachio green color and some that look almost ivory. And then I'm still getting some newer blossoms on them. Oh, I love these plants so much. Annual Ageratum is a perfect plant for rabbits. Why? Because they hate it. <laughs> so if you have a rabbit problem, I guarantee you they're going to avoid these plants. I love them because they bloom all summer and they'll continue blooming into the fall as well. Very pretty. This blue star juniper has such a pretty color, especially when you look at the beautiful green color of the leaves of the little lime hydrangeas. Aren't these blossoms beautiful? Oh my goodness. Never get tired of looking at them. You see some new ones right there starting. Just beautiful. And here are my beloved Pinky Winky Hydrangeas. Despite dealing with remnants of three tropical storms, they're still standing tall, they still have their flowers. You can see one or two brown flowers on them. I think they just got overly waterlogged, but they're fine. The color is such a pretty pink and it's gonna continue deepening as the fall season goes. Just beautiful. And more of the little lime hydrangeas for you. The color changing is amazing. Here you've got a creamy white. You've got some pink and creamy white. Here you see the pinky winkies in the distance. And look at this beautiful hedge of the little lime hydrangeas. All together you can see so many beautiful colors. Yes indeed, this is becoming one of my favorite shrubs. This white heather blooms all summer into fall. And what's great is that the tiny little flowers that you see here will dry and stay on the shrub. So it actually looks like it blooms year round to me because these flowers never really leave the plant. It's amazing. Russian sage, which is almost done for the season. Most of these flowers are dried and they'll stay on through the fall. Look at these knockout roses. This is after almost four straight days of rain. I came out here and was so surprised. Yes, there's a lot of stuff I can't wait to deadhead on here. And I do love to deadhead. It's, I find it to be very relaxing. But look at all the blooms. 
It's just amazing. I love how these shrubs love this particular garden bed. They do so well here. A really cool thing about geranium roseanne are that its leaves turn reddish in the fall. So here's a little example, they're already starting to do that. And here is a geranium roseanne flower. There's a little bud there too. I'll get a few more blooms in the fall. And here's another sea green juniper with the berries that I love so very much. Helene Rosa Sharon is such a beautiful, beautiful Rosa Sharon. It blooms, it's hard out as the summer kicks in, when the heat starts kicking in, hummingbirds love it, pollinators love it. And even despite all the rain that we've had, it's still blooming strong. What I did notice when I came out here, and you'll see this, uh, you'll see notice a few ants on these flowers. That's because there's aphids, or aphids, and the ants love those, and they love the honeydew that the aphids produce. So I've got a video coming up where I'm gonna show you exactly how to tackle it if you have the same problem. This Rheingold Arborvitae, and we have two of them in the backyard, is just starting to get its, what'll be a gorgeous fall and winter color. You can see some copper on the tips of the branches, and it becomes totally copper in the fall for the winter time. It's beautiful. That's it for my garden tour of what's blooming now. And speaking of now, it's your turn. I want you to go outside, and I want you to look really closely at your own garden. I don't want you to focus on what's wrong or what you want to fix. I want you to look close up, find the beauty, and then come back here and leave me a comment telling me what you've seen. I look forward to reading your comments, and until next time, happy gardening.